Hello, fellow Toastmasters. My name is Marav Richter, and I'm the president of Thornhill Toastmasters Club. I'm here to present to you Toastmasters Pathways Chart presentation. Here we ask, what's the best way to choose a pathway? And then I'm going to answer, how do you keep track of your pathway progress once you've chosen it? as well as how to organize your pathways when you have more than one pathway. I promise by the end of this, you'll find this presentation to be both educational and entertaining. And I promise that you will be given an indispensable tool to use for your pathways progress, so much so that you'll be inspired to take your pathways to the next level even in fact, joining into more pathways because it will be that much fun for you. So we'll get right into it. How do we choose a pathway? As we all know, choosing a pathway on the Toastmasters International website by going to Basecamp and then making a selection, choosing a path. If you have not yet chosen a single path, then you will have a choice of 11 different pathways to choose from. Here, I've just given you an example of just three. In order to find out a little bit more about each one, if you just bring your mouse to that plus sign that you see on any of the pathways, click on that, which will open up a short informational about that pathway. In this example, it's effective coaching. In order to see all the projects in the path, click on this button, view all the projects in this path, which will open up all of the five levels of that path. You might notice here though, that you have all the requirements listed in each level, and then you can open up for the elective projects uh, continuing on for each level. This is where it starts to get confusing. How do you know which electives you choose and which ones are required? This is where I find that most Toastmasters don't understand the breadth and scope of how fun this could be to really plan out your projects. It's much like university or college credits uh, to work towards your diploma. There are some things that are must, mandatory, required, and some things that are elective. And it's where you choose your electives that can really be a lot of fun. But how do you choose those? Let me take you to the next level. Uh, the next stage of this is called the pathway chart. Now, at first glance, you might find this a little bit overwhelming. There's a lot of uh, names and columns and pathway projects, but I promise you that by the end of this, this will make complete sense. Uh, let's get right into it. As you may, might see, level one has three projects. Let's expand that so we can see that a little bit clearer. You might notice that in these three projects, Icebreaker and then the second project actually consists of three projects within it. One is to be an evaluator, one is to give a speech, get feedback, and then incorporate that feedback into the second time you give a speech. And then the third project is a speech on research and presentation. You may notice that every single one is required at this level at any pathways that you may choose. So for me, if I wanted to choose motivational strategies as my pathway, as I complete each task, I may choose to put a check for myself. I may choose to put the date, uh, possibly even over the required, keeping track for myself if I've given an evaluator role or given the speech, and then maybe at another club, I gave that speech again, incorporating feedback, keeping track, and then finished that level. And then I can continue doing that for every pathway that I may choose to do. Keeping track for myself now. And there's nothing to prevent me from having done, a fulfilled the icebreaker in one pathway and then fulfilled the icebreaker in a second pathway. Nothing prevents you from doing these concurrently or one after the other consecutively. Again, if you choose, chose to have a third pathway or any subsequent pathway, you would once again track your progress here in this pathway chart. 
One note about this, I do want to uh, give a little note in your levels, in the uh, curriculum itself, you will have to, uh, you'll notice that in this level one, you have a required uh, projects are four. Though when we just looked at the pathways chart, I told you that you only needed actually three projects. Well, with the fourth, it's the level one completion is a required item here. So for each one, you go through and you launch your project, you give your uh, assessment at the beginning, following through with the project, going all the way to the end, give your assessment at the end, move on to launching the second project. Once again, assessment at the beginning, following the project, uh, complete your tasks, uh, including your speeches and your evaluation for this project, do the assessment at the end, and go on to the third. You'll notice then that it's completed and that you have check marks at each of the levels showing that you have had a completion of those projects. However, there's still one step that has to be taken. For instance, you may see this, having not completed any of the projects or the assessments, there is a zero completion, none of the check marks of completion here. And you'll notice that there actually is nothing here to be able to activate your completion. Once you finished all the projects, you will see this. As you've noticed, I've completed three of the assignments, whereas four are necessary. The check marks are in place. Once I've, once I've completed those steps, then this button will appear, activate. Only then will it appear. Once you press this button, activate, you must then mark it as complete. And then your VP education of your club will get a notification let, that lets him or her know that you have activated and marked complete this level. Once they have, uh, once they have approved it, they, uh, then you will see this completed. Until then, it will say pending completion approval. And that's it, you're done level one. Congratulations. Uh, you'll be getting notified and you will be able to see a certificate of completion if you choose to open that up. Congratulations. Now we move on to level two. Great. When I went on to level two, I noticed that once again, we have a requirement of three. Uh, if you'll notice most of these pathways, have uh, either understanding communication, communication style or leadership style, and all of them are required with intro to mentoring. In motivational strategies, it happens to be that active listening is the first project. Well, I wanted to know what active listening is. What does it take? What, what are the requirements? I'm gonna give you a really quick tip. How do you find out in a quick overview what each of these projects is? Well, back to Pathways on the Toastmasters website. Going to Basecamp, the first place that you'll land in Basecamp looks like this. I have created a box around speech evaluations just to show you. This is what you would press. And this will access any project speech evaluation. Clicking on that will bring you to this resource list. It lists out every single project in alphabetical order. It's quite a lot. You're only seeing a small percentage of it here. But you remember from level two, my evaluation, my project was called active listening. So clicking on that opens this up. And once you've opened this up, you come over here to launch, open that up, and you'll see the evaluation form that is active listening. It's the same name as the project. And I happen to notice here, huh, the member must, the member completing this project practice active listening. 
uh, he or she is leading table topics. Okay, now I know how to plot out and plan out my, the way that I'm gonna be presenting, timing my progress. So now I know that I have to book a table topics, be the table topics master. Great. One little side note in case you haven't seen this yet, in your, uh, when this opens up in the evaluation resource, you can choose to download it to your computer or to print it up. Your choice of which one it is that you need to do. Uh, downloading is always a great idea because you can send it off to your evaluator at, at a moment's notice. Also for the VPN, keep in mind that this active listening uh, project requires an evaluator for the Table Topics Master because it's a project. So uh, that has to be allowed for with, uh, within the meeting agenda. On to the pathways chart, back to the pathways chart. So I might make a little note for myself, table topics here, just so that I'm plotting it and remi reminding myself how to organize my speeches. And once I fulfilled, I can give myself a check mark, go on to the next requirement, and then give a speech at the next uh, around intro to mentoring. And great. Now here is the big question. I can already hear some of the more advanced speakers asking. Well, this is a great chart to keep track if I'm just starting out in level one or two, but what about for those of us who have already given quite a few speeches and now we're, we need to keep track of where we spoke before. You come over to Easy Speak. In Easy Speak, you open up this view my speech progress. That will give you a page that has all of your requested speeches, as is mine there. Uh, and then it will show you a workbook matrix, all of the assignments that you have fulfilled in the past, uh, including a history for uh, the pathways that you're on. As you scroll down, you can see other pathways and all the projects that you've already uh, fulfilled, already finished and completed. And you can mark those into your pathways chart to keep a nice visual. Here we get into level three. Here's where I find the chart really becomes a huge help. Uh, level three for all of the pathways has one requirement for each of the pathways, they each have a different project that's required as you can see with each one. For level three, each pathway must have two electives, but the electives that you can choose are from this list of 14. So there's a lot of variety here and a lot of creativity. Only a few things that have been uh, X'd out or not available for that pathway, as you see here. And that's only because those projects came up in level two. For instance, as you see here under motivational strategies, active listening is not available because as you saw, we just saw that in level two. But otherwise we have the rest of them to choose from. And so the required project here is understanding emotional intelligence. So as I was trying to plan out which time slot I wanted to give this speech, I wanted to understand what is an understanding emotional intelligence? What are my requirements for it? So I opened up the evaluation form called understanding emotional intelligence. Huh, and that's where I found during the completion of this project, the member spent a minimum of two weeks keeping a journal about his or her emotional responses to situations and people. Well, I'm glad I opened this up because I didn't spend two weeks keeping a journal. And I know that even before I request this speech with my VP of education, I better do the homework of keeping a two week journal. So that's great for me to know. I can plan out my time. So I can write that in to my chart and then look at the other choices. Well, I wanna give a speech that's pretty um, inspiring. So I looked up the project for inspiring my audience and realized that's the one that I'm gonna go with first. I'm gonna choose that elective first while I'm waiting for my two week journal 
speech to be ready to give, was able to give that speech. But as I was looking for the other electives, I noticed that understanding vocal variety has something called a speech profile. Huh, I opened that up in the evaluations and noticed that the evaluation for this project is different from other evaluations in Toastmasters Pathways. For this project, you will complete a speech profile. The speech profile resource is designed to identify vocal variety skills the speaker uses effectively and those that can not that can be improved. And in looking at this, I see that the speech profile has things like uh, vocal variety, voice quality, and articulation. And that's something I really wanted to challenge myself. So I put a note for myself that I would be giving another speech based on those criteria, and then was able to give another speech at my club and come back and finish my understand emotional intelligence once I was available to do that. I'm able now to continue on to level four. Level four for all of the pathways has one requirement. Again, different projects uh, for each of these pathways and one elective from a list of these electives that we can choose from. Once again, keep in mind that some are uh, not available in certain pathways. So for my planning, I can see that for motivational strategies, I have motivate others, and then I can choose any one of the others as my elective. So in planning and keeping track, I'll open motivate others. And once I've opened motivate others, the evaluation form, I see that this project in order for it to be completed, I have to develop a project, build a team, and work with that team to bring the project to fruition. I also have to ask another team member uh, and at least one club officer to evaluate my leadership through a completion of a 360 evaluation, which I show just as an example here. Uh, it's a longer form, and it really just does take a lot more time. So now that I know that the Motivate Others project requires a 360 and does take a much longer time to fulfill. I'll make a note for myself that a 360 is needed here and I'll choose another elective to have as the meeting uh, for any meeting that I'd like to give a speech at, another. And while I'm waiting to fulfill that 360, motivate others, the larger project, I continue on. Once I've fulfilled that, I go on to level five. Uh, and before I do, I just wanted to show that level four, again, has a minimum requirement of three. Once you've completed the elective projects, uh, opening up the elective projects will give you a list of all of the eight items available for this pathway. I've completed one of the required one, and now I have to go to the, require, the required project here before that availability to be able to complete it will show up here. So as you'll notice also, level four is 34% finished, but my whole curriculum is 56% finished. That means I only have a little bit to go but notice those are some pretty big projects that I've got coming up for me. And that's what we get into in level five. Level five, again, for the example of motivational strategies, the first requirement, level five shows that it has two requirements. In fact, it's one requirement for level five. And then the final requirement for all the paths is to reflect on your path. That becomes the second requirement of level five as well as one elective. Uh, the motivational strategies example is team building, which I went in and found out that that also is a fairly large project requiring uh, some project time and a 360 as well. So I went and looked up the electives just to see what are my choices and noticed that a few of the other ones have 360 
uh, evaluations, and so pretty big projects. So I can now choose which elective I would like to use for this path and organize my path and, and my progress with all the projects ahead. Now, if I have just one of these pathways on the go, it's fairly easy. I can highlight or put a red box around or easily access. I can also put in you know, larger check marks once I've finished the whole level. I can put in dates. It's completely up to you how you'd like to, how creative you'd like to follow this chart. The same thing can happen with a second pathway or a third pathway. And there's a lot to be said for, you know, it's really a personal decision. Some people would like to continue through one pathway from the beginning until completion. And there's another school of thought that has a few pathways going at the same time. And I'll tell you what the only benefit, or the, the largest benefit for that is that as we saw getting into level four, level five, those projects start to be much more uh, cohesive, much more challenging, much more time consuming. Having a second pathway to be able to just create uh, an icebreaker or an evaluation or uh, some of the other smaller projects that you could maybe give uh, off, the, off the cuff or uh, give so that you keep your speaking level up while you're committing to the larger projects in the other levels is really smart. Also getting a third pathway, if you do want to go speak at another club, or if you want to really supercharge your speaking career and get a variety of different challenges underway, then you might want to choose a third pathway. With this pathways chart, you can now organize all of your progress through each and every one of your pathways so that you can have a visual of where it is that you'd like to go and how it is that you would like to map out your success. Because ultimately, you signed up to Toastmasters not just to become a better speaker, but to become a better leader. And having the more challenges, the more projects under your belt has you feel more confident, more uh, credible, and also builds your storytelling bank so that you can then be able to speak on any stage at any moment, at any time. And that just creates a larger set of skills, confidence, and competence in your speaking. I hope you enjoyed this. I promise to make this presentation both entertaining as well as educational. And I hope I achieved that. I wish you luck in all your future success through Pathways, through Toastmasters, through speaking and beyond. My name is Marav Richter, and I hope to see you again soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.